Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, oh, now in April. April's webinar hosted by Gary Hudson on his new package, the NHS Data Dictionary. Um, thanks, Gary, for joining us. We're really looking forward to um, hearing about what you're going to say today. Um, just so everyone's aware, uh, the webinar is being recorded today and will be available along with um, any materials Gary mentions. Um, through links on our website that we posted to YouTube. The webinar should run until about 2 p.m. and there'll be time for Q&A. You can post your questions in the Q&A box, which is on the right hand side, and um, we'll either answer them as we go along or um, we'll just come back to questions at the end. Um, and just so everyone's aware, we have our Slack channel that you're welcome to join. Slack channel is really active. Gary is on Slack. Um, and if you have any questions afterwards about anything related to R, you're welcome to post them on there. Um, so now I'll just hand over to Gary to get started. Thanks, Bethany. Right. OK, everyone. Um, today I'm going to present the NHS Data Dictionary, a package that I've been working on. It's a new package to automate the uh, web scraping of NHS Data Dictionary lookups. So it interfaces directly with the NHS Data Dictionary website. OK, my name is Gary Hudson. I'm the head of Advanced Analytics at Auden and GEM Commissioning Support Unit, and I'll be taking you through it today. So what's what are the benefits of the NHS Data Dictionary package? So always up to date because it's scraping live from the actual website itself. So it'll always bring back the most current results from the NHS Data Dictionary lookup in real time. This enables to you if you've not got an enterprise data warehouse to pull back those lockups to be used in rapid and quick analysis, or you could just chain your pipeline through R to update your enterprise database uh, warehouses from R itself using some of the SQL inbuilt functionality. It allows for the rationalization of NHS lockups and it provides those consistency of those lockups. So we'll always have consistent lockups, always up to date with what's on the NHS data dictionary website. It gives you the ability to perform custom web scraping of websites and website elements. I'll show you some examples of that in the tutorials in the R code as we go through the, uh, the tutorial today. And it's open source, maintained and funded by the NHS R community, and it's supported by me as the package maintainer. So any new developments will be fed in through me. And again, if there are any developments or any ideas that you want me to add to the package, just put them on the, the linked GitHub uh, after this webinar. So it was on CRAN from uh, January all the way up to the end of March. It's been taken down temporarily just to do some uh, core updates and it will be made available again in May. But yeah, the um, kind of downloads of the package are starting to grow. We we're on about before it got taken down around about 600 odd. Um, downloads. This was a little bit prior on February the 22nd of 529. So yeah, the actual visibility on CRAN was grown at that time. So OK, I'll take you into the R script now. So we'll start to launch how to use the package. So first of all, what you need to do is load the library from the package. So the library to install the package, I'll put all the kind of associated GitHub on the, the uh, GitHub supporting site. But yeah, you can install it directly from GitHub. Um, so I've got the library, the data dictionary. I'm going to need dplyr, magritta and tibbles as well. So I'm going to run that line, make sure all the libraries are set up and ready. So the first part of it is to access the NHS data links. So this gives a, an overall lookup so the NHS data dictionary NHS underscore data underscore elements is a function to bring back all the elements. So all the current lookups that are available on the NHS data dictionary website. So it'll allow you, it'll always be up to date and it'll always be current. So if I just run that line, you can see a, a query's gone off to the website. It's returned a result. It says that we've got 2,601 lookups and the six variables we'll explore in a second. So as you can see in the markdown script, You've got the names of the lookups, so what they actually relate to. The actual short URL and the full URL that can be used just to put into Google. I'll show you how to use that shortly. Something called a um, 
an XPath, and I'll show you how to generate XPath on websites later on. But this kind of does that extraction for you. And then for the national and default codes, and the kind of also known, so they're more around the meta information, be provided there. So okay, a bit further down. It always provides a tibble, so it will, like I so give you those those outputs consistently. It will show you what the size of the tibble is, etc. So six rows of how many columns we've got and the data types as well. Character, URLs of character and all that kind of stuff will be character strings. So yeah, it gives you a list of all those lookups and their associated XPath codes. Again, the vignettes are going to be available in the supporting downloads with, with the package tutorials. So say I want to get all the current uh, hyperlinks that are active on a web page. So I'm going to use the NHSR data dictionary webinars site. So if I go, if I able to link this on Google, I'm just going to open Google up. So it's basically going to pick back all these active links on this website. So it will find all the useful links as well on the right hand side, everything that's essentially a hyperlink on this page. So what I do is I pass in my URL. So and then the results, we're going to use the NHS data dictionary link scraper. So we just type this out. And then I pass in my website URL. You're going to see that it's brought back all these link names from that website. So workshops, etc., category R tips, webinars, etc. Just let me comment that out for a second. So the next part of it, I'm going to print the last 20 results from that. So I'm just going to run this in in the line. Oops, I've just changed that as I it's that, that I need. Apologies. So I can see that actually this has brought back the so it's sliced the 16th index so of those results. So I'm using slice from deployer to get the 16th index or row back from that. And you can see that that's the, the blog. So OK, bearing in mind that I've got that now, I know that this is the URL that I need for this website. I can then go to the browse URL function. So open a URL from a R into a web browser. So I've got this URL pulled it back from the active website. It's done a ping to the website and returned all that information from the website around the link names and the URLs. I've got the URLs that I can now use to then navigate to that website. So here it will be the webinars part of the NHS data dictionary page. I'm going to use my browse URL functionality to then open a web browser. So essentially what that will do is interrogate the whole site for all the website, all the active URLs. I've sliced the relevant index that I need. You could use deploys filter here as well. And then essentially you can use the open URL to open that URL in your website. Again, we could use a different example to this. Say I wanted to browse the, I'm just going to go for something random, the 20th result. That's the contact page on the NHSR community. Do the same again. You can see the contact pages uh, now come up. And again, let's just try to another example. So actually, that this is a, a register. Let's see what this does actually out of curiosity. So that brings up the registration form for the NHSR community. And again, you can register your details there. But it's just an example of then it's pulled all these active hyperlinks from the website using the link scraper function. We've sliced the results to get the current URL that I'm interested in. And again, you can get more than one URL and pass it to that um, and iterate through. And then we're going to open that URL using the browse URL function. I've used my subset results, so I've stored those in a data frame and then I'm just accessing the URL element of those. So I've got link name and URL that's been returned in a table. And again, then browse that URL. So it's going to take me to that registration form. And again, this can be used to interrogate any websites and it's built on the top of um, some packages, XML2 and HTTR. It just makes it a little easier to interrogate those without knowing all the, the dynamics of how websites work. OK, 
So that's how we essentially get all the active links off a website. That's how we produce kind of a data lookup dictionary. So our data elements from our NHS data dictionary website. Now we're going to go on to working with the NHSR data dictionary lookups. So this uses the main driver for this is the table R function. So essentially what it will do is it will look to see if there's a national codes table in the um, in the NHS data dictionary. So for the one that we're looking at, the active treatment function code, if I just run this to the reduce table. You can see that I've got a URL here that I could use. So essentially I could just copy this URL from there. So if I just go. If I just go reduced. And then full URL. Print that out, then what I could do is just put this normally into my web browser to interrogate it, which I would probably won't do. I could just use the browse URL functionality as well that I've just shown you. So what it's essentially doing is it goes onto this website. It looks at the actual national code. So this is the. This is the actual um, X path that it's bringing back, so it's the national codes table and if the default codes exist as well, it'll bring those back too. But yeah, you've got all your national codes for all your relevant lookups. So here it's your uh, treatment function codes, which is probably one of the most uh, commonly used. And how it's generated, and I'll show you how to do this in, in Google Chrome. It might work differently in other web browsers, but in Google Chrome, you right click on your um, on your table here and you hit inspect or you could use control shift and I. OK, and you can see that I've got this table, so this table body here and table class. So it's the table class element that is utilized in the package for all the different lookups. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go copy. Copy. You can do X X path or the full X path. So I'm going to copy the X path and see what that looks like. So if I just put it into here for a second, you'll have this this tag then that refers always to that element. So the treatment function code element in the national codes and what the NHS data uh, dictionary part of it does is it will generate all those X paths for you. So you can see the X path of the national code will always be the link to that X path. So essentially what that means is every time every time we re return that we can interrogate the X path and the URL from that website. I'm just going to get rid of this and then we can reference that in R. So let's do this step by step. So I'm doing a filter. On activity treatment function code. I can then just view the full URL if I wanted to. And then again, we could use the browse URL function. The one to two on this reduced Tibble full URL. That'll take me to the instead of copy and pasting it, that'll take me to the same part of the NHS data model and dictionary. I'm just going to comment those out because we're detracting a little bit. But yeah, essentially then that's how you could use the full URL into a website. So I'm going to use the reduced table and I've filtered on this this NHS table that I've generated. That's been generated from pulling back all the data elements. OK, and then active direct, uh, treatment function code. Bringing that back you can see all those data elements there. I'm going to filter the ones that match the link name activity treatment function code. And then I'm going to use the table R functionality to utilize that the full URL out of that reduced table and the X path national code. So that will bring bring back all the national codes for that URL and I'm going to give it a custom title um, calling NHS hospital activity treatment function national codes. If that custom title is not specified, then it will just come up with a default title for you. You can see now the it sent a request to the website to pull back all those codes that we saw in that table on the NHS data dictionary um, website. And you can see that all the codes exist with the description. So it'll bring back these to any any content that matches in that table would be brought back in these cells. And then these cells are added on by the table or function. So 
the dictionary type will be the name of the dictionary or the, the actual dictionary that you want to create and the date it's extracted. So essentially you could have these dates extracted and if you had a database you could keep appending or looking to see if there's any difference in change to create your own lookups. So if these lookups change over time, you could then use the date extracted as a way to version those. So yeah, that's bringing back. So that's essentially bringing data through into the NHS data lookups. Then we're going to use a filter on that, uh, that table, that data dictionary to filter out the, the relevant codes of interest, so the activity treatment function code. And then I'm going to use the table R function to bring back the, the tibble, the relevant tibble. So I'm going to pass the URL there and the, the XPath, the national code to that uh, function. And I can see that I, if I print those, the head of those national codes for the first 10, I'll get the code description, the type that we've already shown you in the uh, data environments on the right hand side. So say I've got my data from the NHS and I want to fire off a query uh, and I want to then match up certain um, activity treatment function codes or it can be anything else that you choose from that table. It doesn't just have to be like that. it's got site code, location code, different types of procedures like like I've said there's there's a lot there um, and I don't even know what all these codes do but yeah I know the ones that are uh, relevant to me so uh, treatment function codes, site codes, location codes, CCG codes, etc. Let's save that here. So say I've got this, this is a table of new data, so it's got my specialty code in. I'm generating this uh, in script, so it's, it's specialty code 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. And I'm going to create some just some spurious activity counts. And I'm going to repeat the month of May five times just to align to the number of observations that we've got. So if I specify that there, I've cr basically created a, a kind of pseudo data frame. So I've got my specialty code. This is the thing that I'm going to join on. I've got my activity count. So if you're doing some performance analysis, etc., it could be at patient level. And I've got the month that the activity occurs in. The next thing I'm going to do is quite simply then from my national codes table. So my lookup table here that's been all interrogated from the NHS Data Dictionary website. I'm going to then join my specialty code using deploy's left join by the current code that I've got. So if I run that, you can see now that actually my specialty code there from the original data is there, the activity counts of the month. And now I've got my description that's been pulled through from my national codes table that's been interrogated from the NHS data dictionary website. So now I've got my set of nationality codes um, and specialty codes and everything then I could then import that into a BI tool or a shiny app or into some analysis that I'm doing and it'll, it always queries that data real time. So you'll always have the, the, um, the lookup values that are relevant to the NHS data dictionary and the ones that are also updated at the time. So what I'm doing at the moment then, so that relies on creating a couple of sub steps. So creating the NHS tibble and then creating these, these um, secondary steps. So using then get the tibble, filter on the tibble and then do uh, a lookup to that table using table R. So why I've taken it down temporarily from CRAN is I want to also do a quick search function into that. So I've included the function and how it would look, but essentially what this would do is you just put in the lookup value that you need um, and then it will query that for you straight away from the NHS table. So it will create the NHS table, it will do the filter and then it will query the national codes. So I'm going to call it something like Merge Framer. So I'm, I'm including that into CRAN as we speak. So if we just run that, it's going to create a function in memory. This will also this will be available in the package when it comes to it. And then what I'll be able to do is just simply use the. I'm going to get rid of the tail argument here. I'll use the Merge Framer just to interrogate that activity function code. So just or is a data frame. 
So straight away, it's done all that querying for you, for me, just in one function. So I've replicated probably three steps. So this step here and this step here into one function wrapper, which is what I want to do next to make it more user friendly. So essentially all you do is use the merge framework. It will create that uh, lookup to that data table. You pass through which one you want to filter off. So it'll be the activity treatment function code. So if I find it here, it'll be treatment function code, which is at row 32. And then it will just then return back the relevant table linked to that activity treatment code. OK, so that's how you'd use it based on what I call more tabular lookups. If you've got an X path and an X path function, that's how you'd use it. And again, we could use this function. Let's do another example. So let's find another data table that we can utilize uh, from the NHS table. Accommodation type. Let's see if that exists. So we can use line 14. DF2 merged. So we use that. Oops, what was the description called? Let's use that, see if it actually has, there is actually a, a national code for that. Because if it, I want to show you an example of if it doesn't exist. So that one does exist. So you can see now I've passed in this activity location type code and I've created that as a second data frame. So I'll change that activity location type. See that's really quick instead of doing those sub steps above. But I quite like having them in memory so I can reference them. But I think this short version would make it a lot easier to query. That's why I'm adding it into the the function as we speak. So I'm going to run that line again. You can see now I've got this activity type location type code. And it's giving me back all these activity location types from the NHS data dictionary. And again, it's that easy just to query tables straight away from memory from the website. It'll always be up to date. It's always relevant. And like I say, it's always reproducible. So that kind of shows you how to get the data back from the data dictionary, how to then uh, create an XPath and use the URL to browse websites in R. It then shows you how to a quick function for doing quick lookups using the NHS data dictionary package. The next item is to use. So we've learned about XPath elements, which is what these are. So what we've worked with so far are called uh, XML tables. But what if I wanted to work with other components from that from that particular website? So the example here, the abbreviated mental mental health test score. If I put that URL into my browser, just for now, let's do it manually. I'll just get rid of these sub URLs. So you can see that actually there's no national codes table here. You'll see based what's on this page. So if I tried to to uh, push the national codes from this site, I'd get a message in all from the NHS data dictionary website saying this the national codes table doesn't exist. Please try something else. But if I want to pick out like elements from here, like the score is in the range of zero to ten, or I want to pull back the description fields, which is the the thing that we're going to look at. Again, I'm going to use inspect on that, and I'm going to I'm going to highlight what I need to work with. So it's this body topic here. So I'm going to copy my X path. Again, this can be used on any website. It doesn't have to be the data dictionary website. You can use it on the NHS data dictionary site or, or wherever else. So we've got this and this should match that. I've already pre-populated it, but essentially that's the X path element there that we've just um, found. So if I run the URL, I've got my URL, my X path element. And I'm going to use the X path. So we've used the we've used the table R function out of the NHS data dictionary. We're going to use the X path texter now 
So we're going to pass the URL and the XPath element to that result. So it will return a list of results. So we're going to we're going to have a look at that in the environment window first of all. So the result will be the description. So what is pulled back from that website? We'll be able to see it a little bit better in the the console window in a second. The website that we've passed to that function. So that's the URL that we passed. The XPath that we passed to it. So the particular element on that website. A node result, so what nodes it's brought back and how it's processed that using XML. Again, all this is just secondary, more metadata you probably won't utilize. The date time it was accessed, again, so using a timestamp methodology for everything that we access to the NHS data dictionary. And the person that accessed it, so it's used my local credentials, it knows I'm the user, and I've, I've actually accessed it from this laptop. So if I print that, that result list out into our markdown window. You'll see that we've got this list separated by element. So to access those elements. You'd go result list. And then you've got all the different list elements here. So my result will be the actual text itself. So the description, you've got these new line comments we'll have to clean later on. That's the next part of the process doing the text cleaning. We've got the website that was passed to it. The X path that we've passed, which we know because we've already stored those as separate variables, but you could do this all in one go if you were in, inside the function. We could do it this way instead. Like that. Yeah, and it's done the same thing. I just like to store them in variables because it makes it easier to read. But yeah, you can store it into those into the function itself. Let me just line break that. OK, so you've got this result list. And then each one of those, like you say, you can access it using list notation, so indexing each one the date time it's accessed. When I actually sent the request through, which was like say 1328 on the 21st. So now we've got this text. I've got this result list. Um, I've got this result list and I'm going to use the result. So the text that's been returned as we saw before. So the text that's been returned is the description, so the abbreviated mental test score. And if we browse to the, again, the URL, so we can do that. Browse to the URL. We're going to use the URL that we've highlighted as a variable here. So I'm just going to pass that variable in, but that'll be the long description as text. So the description here is brought back this text in this XPath block. So we've got that text back as a result. So the next step then would be to start to clean that text. So I'm going to use the result list and these are all kind of. This would be tailored to the actual specific cleaning purpose that you need. So this won't work every time with every result, but it will it'll remove line spaces and blank uh, blank text, etc. So first of all, I'm going to use the trim white space um, command. And I'm going to use the unlist function to actually separate from that list. So clean text, I'm going to call it first of all, starting to clean it a little bit. Then I'm going to use a Magritte pipe um, to get rid of uh, the new lines and breaks. So the, the N, N values that we'd seen over here, if I sh you can show it in the environment window, you've got these new lines that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to get rid of those. Again, I'm going to trim the white space and I'm going to cast it as a character. So I'm going to convert it to a character string. I'm going to print that out. And we've got this more user friendly description now. And again, when you actually print that out, it doesn't have this white space when you export it. For some reason, Markdown still showing that. OK, so they're the kind of extraction features within the NHS data dictionary tool. So the table R will bring back those national code tables. 
the NHS underscore data um, elements will bring back all the data elements from the website. So all URLs and everything that exists on that website for the uh, NHS data dictionary website. We've looked at how you can scrape hyperlinks off a website. We've used R to actually open websites directly in R. We've done a, um, a filter on our tibble and we've passed in the activity treatment function code. We've then done a table R to look up those national codes. And that prints back the head of those national codes. Um, and then from that, we then talked about a function that's going to appear in the package as of May that will make it a little bit simpler to find to, to repeat that process so you don't have to do it as intermediary steps. And the next part we talked about how you'd bind that onto your data. So this act aggregations, activity aggregations can be simply joined onto, onto one of those lookup tables. There's the function that we, we discussed and how you'd bring back text or specific XPath text elements from a website. And we, we did a little bit of uh, post-processing of that in terms of cleaning the text. The next set of features that the tool offers. So before I used R extensively and Python, I used to look, use a lot of Excel, work a lot in Excel to do string cleaning and extraction. So the NHS Data Dictionary provides simple shorthands for all the kind of text cleaning operation. So we've got a left Excel, a right Excel, a mid Excel, a length Excel. And if I bring Excel up, I'll show you how these are native in Excel. So left, it's essentially meant to replicate those. Right, len mid and there's more that can be added but they were they were just useful for the sake of uh, adding into the tool so in the prior step we created this clean text so we did the the post processing on the xpath text that we retrieve, retrieve from the live url so it's pulling that text straight from the url we did some text cleaning so here it allows you to then um, perform some left extraction of that text. So if we just print out what the clean text looks like again. So you've got this description abbreviated mental test score is the person score where the assessment tool type. The range of zero to so say I want to just bring back the description field. I can use the NHS data dictionary left Excel function to pull back that clean text. If I print that, you can see that I've got that that extracted using the left function. So it says from the left of that clean text. Go 11 along and then return what the result is. So description, the same function, but it starts at the. At the bottom of the text, so at the right of the text. It says go in eight characters one two three and then essentially it'll go to somewhere between there you've got that zero to ten so you can start creating custom variables or custom features based off that string extraction the mid works slightly differently so the mid so if we look at the clean text again the mid will say start at position 15 and go all the way to 42, so 42 characters along. So it's like a range in, in, in the middle of the text. And you can see now that's brought back the abbreviated mental test score. And you can create other functionality there to, to use. You could use the left, mid and right together, the len and left together, the right and len together, etc. So my full string, if I specify the length, and I print that out. I've got this full string length now. So it's actually it's it contains 231 characters in that instance. So the length will always get the length of the string that you passed. It utilizes a couple of base R functions to do that, but it's in a nice, easy to understand format for Excel users transitioning into R. 
and then we've got the mid clean length as well which will be slightly different because we've changed we've extracted the text using the middle function and then we're going to take a subset of that text which will be 29 so the one before was a 231 and that's 29 long you can see that there in the values part of your variables window and then finally i just did a, a concatenated so a, a concatenated paste function the original string length when we first started the clean text so from the extracted text here is 231 and the middle clean text so when we did this extraction part is now 29 so you can then compare those a recent addition to the nhs data dictionary so this was purely designed to look up and emulate the nhs data dictionary website is the open safely data function that's been added into the the package so we've got the open safely lister and we pass in the actual directory that we need to look at in the website so it will always start with open safely and again we could probably simplify the function for it to always start at that and i want to look at the ace inhibitor inhibitor medications and this uses all the functionality that we've developed in this tool in the back end of this function so if we want to then run that off and glimpse at it you can see now this is directly querying open safely's website and it'll bring back these codes as a list and i want to find list elements or i want to convert it to a data frame i can do that quite simply oops do that to a data frame let's do it as a tibble and so on the list do i need to unlist it I probably yeah so the as tibble conversion function will take that list and it converts it to a data frame so you, now you've got a data frame and it, it can you see it looks similar to the table r function because it's actually using the table r function in the back end of this so it'll bring back for that ace inhibitor medications the relevant um the relevant lookups needed there and thanks to Callum Polwart who actually uh, added this functionality in, in GitHub. So because this is a collaborative project, please feel free if there's any ideas that you've got that you'd want to, for us to look at, to add it in as a GitHub comment or create an issue on GitHub. And then I can add that uh, functionality in or I can make you a contributor to the package and you can work with me to add that in yourself. It's a good and you know it's a good part of learning and you also get your name alongside a package at the same time so that then creates that simple wrapper to the open safely uh, data set and the only thing that this package will be different um, all these functionality will be available the only thing that i'll have added in as of may will be this simplified function to look up those activity elements that we we talked about earlier So yeah, so we've gone through, just let's take it, let's just recap. We've gone through loading that package in, um, taking through, so extracting data elements as a tibble. So that brings back everything from the NHS, um, the NHS data dictionary lookup website. We've scraped links, so all active um, hyperlinks on a website and brought that back as a tibble. We've browsed a URL from R, We've used the table R function um, to create essentially a lookup table for my activity treatment function codes. So it's live querying the website and then it's using the table R function to essentially say bring back the national codes table from that website, which gives you that result. We've then created a synthetic data set and we've then joined it onto our lookups to get the actual relevant national codes and the time it's extracted. This is what will be added in. So this won't, this will probably be called something similar and I'll put that in the package documentation um, as merge framer, um, something like that. So you can repeat the process all in one simple step just by passing in the, the name of the table that you're looking at. 
we then extrapolated or extracted um, text from the website itself, so text elements, and we did a little bit of text cleaning on those elements. And then we did some string extraction similar to what you probably used in Excel if you've ever used Excel before. Finally, we looked at all the inbuilt functionality that we'd, we'd highlighted earlier to look at the table R function. And then essentially more functionality will be added to the package, like I've just said earlier, and then it will be available again on CRAN in May. To get help on this, you can just say, because they've got all help and manual files, you could go um, NHS data dictionary. Let's just find one of the functions. Where's that? You can find one of the functions that you need. So open safely list R for one. Let's just get that and find some help on it. So I put in a... oh, it's because it's not in a or code block just on a second. So to get the, the help, generate the help. You can use a question mark and the particular function that you want help on. And it will show you how this function is used in the help screen. So it belongs to the data dictionary package. It's used in the table R parent function, so it links to the table R script in, in case you want to understand how that works. And then it shows you the lists of codes that you can use with the Open Safely code lists. So I'll take you to the Open Safely website. And again, there's this eight inhibitor medications is the lookup table that we used. And we use that uh, lookup table in there. It can also take you to the. Uh, so if you want to use that look, it says this is how the, the example that you'd use to, to look that data up. And again, that's there's a couple of examples of how it can be used. Same for if we're going to look at the, I don't know, we looked at the, let's say the left Excel function. Shows you how to use the left Excel function. Again, that just provides some contextual help for you. Okay, so let me just go back to my slides. Okay, so we covered quite a lot in that session. We've covered how to extract elements from website, browse websites, pull back data tables, pull back elements from the website, uh, do string extraction and manipulation, clean post processing, cleaning text, and then extracting data from the Open Safety website, as well as the recommendation for a new function. So in terms of the supporting resources, the script, the markdown that I just showed you, is available in a uh, in the GitHub repository. I'll show you what the output of it looks like. So essentially it's a bit like a book down project where you can just go through and say how to use the package. So on the left hand side, it's all the sub subheadings, accessing the NHS data links, getting all your hyperlinks from a web page using link scraper, open a URL from R into a web browser, working with the NHS uh, R data dictionary lookup, the table of function and the outputs from that, using my lookup with NHS data, which we've just covered, combining all that into a one fu function, which will be available in the next update, how you can extract text from a website, cleaning the text, mal manipulating the text with uh, XL like string functions, working with the open safely data, and then wrapping up in terms of more functionality. I'm just going to go back to my slides again. So again, all this is contained in the GitHub page. So I'll just navigate to my GitHub page. So for this webinar, there's supporting material on my GitHub site. And at the moment, this is the best way to download the package until it's available on CRAN in May. It's been on CRAN prior to that, so it's been on CRAN since January, but uh, I've taken it down because I want to do some up major updates to it and then republish it. But this is all the kind of presentations that I've had here. So if you want to read the presentation from today, you can pull that up. 
the HTML is available there for download as raw. And then one important thing to note is, um, again, it's all been funded and sponsored by the NHSR community. So if you've got any package proposals or anything that you're thinking of developing, then please get in touch with the NHSR community. To install the package, we're going to use the remotes package. And in remotes is an install underscore GitHub. And then all you need to do is use this functionality here. So paste that into your R project or your console window. That'll take care of the installation for you. And then you'll be able to just load that in to your R environment, like we had similar here at the top. So that bit, that will then be the function that you use to load it in and it will load the NHS data dictionary library into your environment. Um, let me get back to the GIF slightly. And then again, it'll say what's in the webinar, what's contained, how to use the package. I've put the, the vignette in the R site. There's also the GitHub repository tutorial, which is the vignette that I've just showed you of how to use it available there. And again, all the other stuff around getting in touch with me or if you want to access any, want any more ideas around how we could use the tool or you want to collaborate on the tool, then then let me know. OK, that's the end of the presentation. I'll just stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Gary. That was um, fantastic um, and so much information there. Um, I don't know if you've been able to see the questions that have been posted on the side, but we could go through those now. I'll just review them. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> OK, so there's one around from Nicholas around different versions of the NHS data dictionary website. I know that there's a there's an archive um, package that exists. So there's archive website that you can utilize and you could use the functionality that's built in the tool to pull those back or you could get those um, those retrospective lookups are available. So after this session, Nick, I'll come back to you directly with the link to that website. I can't see any more though, other than the new question. Let's have a look. Uh, but just the one, and you may have already addressed it, but about using table R to pull down tables from other websites. Yeah, the table R package essentially, as long as you know the the actual URL and the X path, it can pull back any any um, website tables at all. Brilliant. Oh, I just had one new one there. Can you just read it out to me? Sorry, Bethany, I can't. No, that's fine. New um, question. So it's from Joe who says, um, I was just doing something similar to scrape all the useful text and dosage info from BNF online, but I've never had the time to finish off. I think some of these functions might make it a bit easier, so maybe I'll revisit it. Is there anything on inexact text matching included? I'd need that to translate modern BNF online chemicals into the five to ten year old ones we use in prescriptions today. So, I mean, the XPath texter would be a way to, uh, to pull the text back from that website. Um, in terms of the other types of matching, then perhaps you'd need to use a separate package with the XPath texture alongside it. Fab, I think that's all of our questions for now. Um, Fantastic. And so thank you again, Gary. And um, as we said at the beginning, if you do have any more questions, um, you can follow the link that Sharon posted to our Slack page um, and feel free to post them on there. And the uh, webinar materials will be available through the NHSR website um, after the webinar has ended. And Sharon has also posted a link to a little feedback form. Um, we'd really appreciate any comments or suggestions you have um for our next webinars so thank you again gary and thanks to everyone for attending thanks bethany thanks all